Welcome back to Cityscape. In today's episode of Secret People, we will cover Benoit Mendelbrough, a French mathematician and polymath. There is a tendency for artists and engineers to represent shapes using polyhedra. Polyhedra are three-dimensional objects with flat faces, straight edges, and sharp corners. This visual representation makes the objects appear smooth, flat, and straight. But is this a good model for reality? A quick observation will show that this isn't the case. Natural objects are not smooth in real life. In fact, they are quite messy, full of curvatures, fragments, and bent in every direction. Look at the clouds for an example. Do you see any straight lines there? What about a gemstone? Are the angles perfectly straight? Probably not. The truth is, nature does not move in flat straight lines, but through curves and fragments. If that's the case, how do you then quantify, measure, and study such rough surfaces? Using a straight ruler is practically useless at this point. Well, thanks to Bernard Mendelbroth, we now actually have a method for measuring roughness. His proposed technique is not only mathematically elegant, but spiritually poetic as you will see later in the episode. As always, let's start with a brief background. Benoit Mendelbroth was born to a Jewish family in Warsaw, Poland on November 20th, 1924. His father made a living in a clothing trade, and his mother was a dental surgeon. He lived 12 years as a boy in Poland, but in 1936, his family migrated to France. Reason for the move? The Second World War. Nazi Germany was going through a campaign of hate. Benoit and his family, being Jewish, had to flee. France would be later occupied by the Nazis, and the family's escape to that region no longer guaranteed safety. Benoit recalls this period. Our constant fear was that a sufficiently determined foe might report us to an authority and we will be sent to our deaths. This happened to a close friend from Paris, Zina Morange, a physician in a nearby county seat. Simply to eliminate the competition, another physician denounced her. We escaped this fate. Who knows why? Anyway, after the war, Mendelbroth returned to Paris and attended L'Ecole Polytechnique. He then obtained a master's in aeronautics from the California Institute of Technology. Lastly, he obtained his PhD in mathematics at the University of Paris in 1952. After receiving his doctorate, Benoit worked at Philips Electronics, where his task was to provide theoretical background for engineers developing color television. After this, he turned his attention to studying financial markets. He developed several original approaches for modeling financial fluctuations. He found that price changes in financial markets did not follow a Gaussian distribution, but had a stable distribution with infinite variance. Stable distributions have the property that the sum of many instances of a random variable follows the same distribution but with a larger scale parameter. Little did he know, but he was actually probing at what would become his life's major work, fractals. In 1958, Bernoulli joined the IBM Thomas Watson Research Center in New York. Using the newly developed IBM computers at his disposal, Menobroth was able to further flush out the mathematical definition of fractals and create fractal images using computer code. There, he developed a concept that would be named after him, the Menobroth set. This is a set of complex numbers C for the quadratic iteration with the critical point of f of z equals z squared plus c. When a function is continuously iterated using a computer, they reveal infinitely recursive geometric details. Here is a vivid preview of the Menobrot set at work. I will begin our serious exploration of the Menobrot set, a voyage which, in fact, could last forever and ever, much longer than the lifetime of the universe. I have here the full set, about six inches across. Now, if I blow this up, 
I'll increase the magnification now 13 times. And you see more and more detail is appearing. And the interesting thing is you see mini Mandelbrots, replicas, almost identical, yet perhaps subtly different, of the original set. And I can go on doing this. Here is a magnification of more than 3,000 times. So the original picture, about six inches across, is now half a mile across. And no matter how much we magnified it, a million times, a billion times, until the original set was bigger than the entire universe, we would still see new patterns, new images emerging, because the frontier, the end set, is infinitely complex. And when I say infinitely, I really mean that. Most people, when they say infinitely, they mean only or rather big. But this is really infinity. infinitely complex. It's based on incredibly simple principles, unlike almost everything in modern mathematics. In fact, anybody who can add and multiply can understand the principles on which it's based. You don't even have to subtract or divide, still less use logarithms or trigonometrical functions to comprehend how the Mandelbrot set is created. In fact, in principle, it could have been discovered any time in human history, and not merely in 1980. But the problem is this, although it's only based on adding and multiplying, you have to carry out those operations millions, billions of times to create a complete set. And that's why it was not discovered until the era of modern computers. As strange as this recursive geometric phenomenon may appear, it is actually the natural pattern we encounter in nature Fractal patterns are displayed in many phenomena such as clouds, plants, seashells, mountains, lightning, or even in a clustering of galaxies. Mendelbroth would himself say, Clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. Nature exhibits not simply a higher degree, but an altogether different level of complexity. You actually don't need a supercomputer to create fractals. You can make them yourself. Here is an exercise that will give you a solid grasp of self-similarity, at least theoretically. It's called a Koch snowflake. The Koch snowflake is an infinitely jagged fractal curve that can be obtained using the following instructions. 1. Start with an equilateral triangle with size of length 1. 2. Replace the middle third of each side by a new outward equilateral triangle with sides of length 1 third of the previous triangle you just drew. 3. Repeat the process for each new triangle 
replacing outward edges with new equilateral triangles. Again, with size one third as long as the previous step. Four, continue the process indefinitely and you will have a fractal. What's strange or spiritually beautiful perhaps is the fact that fractal geometry confirms an old adage, as above, so below. It seems like the ancients knew far more than we give them credit for. The more practical utility of fractal mathematics, however, comes in the domain of measurement. As mentioned earlier, measuring roughness is not so straightforward. In his brilliant paper, How Long is the Coastline of Britain, Benoit Mendelbroth shows that the measured length of a coastline depends on the scale of measurement. He suggests that the smaller the increment of measurement, the longer the measured length becomes. For an example, when a British coastline is measured in units of 200 kilometers, its length is approximately 2,400 kilometers. But when it's measured in units of 50 kilometers, its length is 3,400 kilometers. This empirical evidence suggests a rule which, if extrapolated, shows that the measured length increases towards infinity as the measurement scale decreases towards zero. Since everything, including parts of the human body, such as the alveoli in our lungs, have fractal properties, then we can poetically conclude that there is infinity in all of us. Those of you interested in learning more on fractals should read Mendelbrot's book, The Fractal Geometry of Nature. Link is in the description. Mendelbroth was awarded several prizes for his breakthrough in mathematics. His award includes the Wolf Prize for Physics and France's Legion of Honor. When he died in October of 2010, the French president at the time, Nicolas Sarkozy, said Mendelbroth's research is what led us to modern information theory. Best-selling author and mathematician Nassim Nicholas Taleb remarked that Mendelbroth's book the misbehavior of markets is, quote, the deepest and most realistic finance book ever published, end quote. Mendelbroth may be dead, but his work on fractal geometry is very much alive, being actively employed both within the science and spiritual community. I guess to me, the most beautiful thing about fractal geometry is that it adds proof to the old axiom, know thyself, and you shall know the universe. See you next time.